for other people of the same name of C. Sophronius. Sophronius was the Patriarch of Jerusalem from 634 until his death, and is venerated as a saint in Eastern Orthodox and Catholic churches, before rising to the primacy of the See of Jerusalem. He was a monk and theologian who was the chief protagonist for Orthodox teaching in the doctrinal controversy on the essential nature of Jesus and his volitional acts. Sophronius was of Syrian Arab descent. A teacher of rhetoric, Sophronius became an ascetic in Egypt about 580 and then entered the monastery of St. Theodosius near Bethlehem, traveling to monastic centers in Asia Minor, Egypt, and Rome. He accompanied the Byzantine chronicler Street, John Moschus, who dedicated to him his celebrated tract on the religious life, Lyman Ho Lymanon. On the death of Moschus in Rome in 619, Sophronius accompanied the body back to Jerusalem for monastic burial. He traveled to Alexandria, Egypt, and to Constantinople in the year 633 to persuade the respective patriarchs to renounce monotheletism, a heterodox teaching that espoused a single, divine will in Christ to the exclusion of a human capacity for choice. Sophronius' are extensive writings on this question are all lost. Although unsuccessful in this mission, Sophronius was elected Patriarch of Jerusalem in 634. Soon after his enthronement he forwarded his noted synodical letter to Pope Honorius I and to the Eastern Patriarchs, explaining the orthodox belief in the two natures, human and divine, of Christ, as opposed to monotheletism which he viewed as a subtle form of heretical monophysitism. Moreover, he composed a florilegium of some 600 texts from the Orthodox Church Fathers in favor of the Orthodox tenet of diotheletism. This document also is lost. In his Christmas Sermon of 634, Sophronius was more concerned with keeping the clergy in line with the Chalcedonian view of God giving only the most conventional of warnings of the Muslim Saracen advance on Palestine, commenting that the Saracens already controlled Bethlehem. Sophronius, who viewed the Muslim control of Palestine as unwitting representatives of God's inevitable chastisement of weak and wavering Christians, died soon after the fall of Jerusalem to the Caliph Umar I in 637, but not before he had negotiated the recognition of civil and religious liberty for Christians in exchange for tribute, an agreement known as Amari Treaty. The Caliph himself came to Jerusalem and met with the Patriarch of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Sophronius invited Umar to pray there, but Umar declined, fearing to endanger the church's status as a Christian temple. Beside polemics, Sophronius' writings included an encomium on the Alexandrian martyrs Cyrus and John in gratitude for an extraordinary cure of his failing vision. He also wrote 23 anachaontic poems on such themes as the Saracen siege at Jerusalem and on various liturgical celebrations. His anachaontica 19 and 20 seem to be an expression of the longing desire he had of the holy city, possibly when he was absent from Jerusalem during one of his many journeys. The order of the two poems has to be inverted to establish a correct sequence of the diverse subjects. Arranged in this way, the two poems describe a complete circuit throughout the most important sanctuaries of Jerusalem at the end of 6th century, described as the Golden Age of Christianity in the Holy Land. Themes of Annika Anticon 20 include the Gates of Jerusalem, the Anastasis, the Rock of the Cross, the Constantinian Basilica, Mount Sion, the Praetorium, Saint, Mary at the Probatica, and Gethsemane. The Mount of Olives, Bethany, and Bethlehem come next in Annika Anticon 19. Sophronius also wrote down the life of Saint. Mary of Egypt, which is read on the fifth Thursday of Lent in the Eastern Orthodox Church. In 637, after the conquest of Jerusalem by Muslim armies, the Muslim Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab came to Jerusalem and toured the city with Sophronius. During the tour of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the time for Muslim prayer came. 
and despite Sophronius's offer to Umar to pray inside the church, Umar chose to pray outside. The caliph's reason for declining to pray there was because in the future Muslims might say that Umar prayed here and use it as an excuse to build a mosque there. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to build a mosque there. So appreciating the caliph's intelligence he gave the keys of the church to him. Unable to refuse it the caliph gave it to a family of Muslims from Medina and asked them to open the church and close it. The keys of the church of the Holy Sepulchre still remain with the Muslim family. Bibliography. Carrot Donald D. Wagner. Dying in the Land of Promise. Palestine and Palestinian Christianity from Pentecost to 2000. Carrot, Orthodox Holiness Around the Church Year with St. John, John Moshos, March 11, retrieved 13 September 2011. Carrot, Avril Cameron and Lawrence Conrad. Carrot, Stephen Runciman, A History of the Crusades, Volume 1 The First Crusade, 3-4. Carrot, Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, Orthodox Commemoration of the Feast of St. Mary of Egypt, retrieved 13 September 2011. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge University Press.